I realize now what was making me sad is her yearning for my old backyard. Maybe I was wrong to leave. Better swallow my old country pride. What? What now? What is it? What's wrong? Oh, all painful's back. And he's being a cunt. Again. As I was approving my YouTube comments today, I was in for a big surprise. All painful's back, this time on Reddit. I couldn't believe my eyes. I've never had time to try to rhyme in my video script. But I know that Old Painful is a bit of a dick. I'm a poet and I don't know it. Let's stop that right there before it starts to get very annoying. Hit the dislike button. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at what Old Painful has to say for himself, shall we? The videos made to humiliate me are still on YouTube. So Old Painful feels humiliated by the videos that are on YouTube about him. Okay. I felt that the videos that I made were more of a cautionary tale to warn him to stop being a dick in future, but it seems that he's still being a dick. Full context for the situation, an anti-cyberbullying support group. We'll have a look at that in a second, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still traumatized about being humiliated online because the videos made about me are STILL UP! Caps. If you look up ALL PAINFUL on YouTube, the name of my former small YouTube channel, there are a dozen videos mocking or belittling me. I'm deeply bothered that these videos cannot be removed. That would be censorship of people's speech, all painful. I think this video is crappy. Look at that crappy red guy. He's not even wearing any pants. Crappy? He cannot say that I am crappy. I will take down notification his video. Mario, that's his video. He'll just send you a counter <laughs> notification. Copyright don't work like that. This is not fair. Nope, this is fair use. Copyright has a concept called fair use that allows people to comment, comment on or remix or, or criticize your video. Screw fair use. I'm sending him a takedown notification anyway. No, wait. Hey, Fred, I want to take down the video that is making fun of me. Mario, you can't go around censoring people who are commenting on or criticizing your video. Copyright law leaves room for commentary, criticism, parody, and other transformative uses. You can get in a lot of trouble for ignoring that. I've tried talking to my parents, my school, and still I cannot get the videos taken down. You can't just take down other people's videos because you don't like what they're saying. I don't like EastEnders or Coronation Street. I'm not trying to get that banned. Is there any way to get these videos removed <laughs> off the platform? You fucking dick. You fucking idiot. I cannot go on living knowing that people can still watch these videos and laugh at me over something that isn't funny. I don't know. I mean, I don't think the videos about you are very humorous. You told rape victims that they deserve to be fucking raped. What makes you think that that's funny in any way, shape or form? Anyway, let's move on. My cyberbullying story by All Painful. I used to be in a discord of a guy who talked about morbid topics like paedophilia and racism. I was interested in that sort of stuff, don't judge me. I hope you mean that you are interested in fighting against it, not being any of it. I was in a voice chat one day and I expressed an idea to anal rape Cartman from South Park as a punishment. Oh my god, he's went there, ladies and gentlemen. He's came back after a year and a half and he's still going on about Cartman. I expressed an idea to anal rape Cartman from South Park as a punishment, mostly because Cartman was a rapist in the show. So who gives a shit? The fat bastard deserved it. Oh, painful, mate. Just... C can you stop? Like, this is doing you no favours. Again! For the fourth time? I think. <laughs> ha 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 ha! 
Immediately after I expressed the idea, they immediately turned on me, calling me a paedophile who was advocating child molestation, which baffled me. You said that Cartman, <laughs> a child in a TV show, deserved to be raped. <laughs> that baffles me, man. My idea was the opposite. My idea was to rape rapists. <laughs> Okay. I have no idea to this day if they actually thought I was a pedophile or if they were <laughs> twisting my words. Sorry, I know that, like, this is edgy shit, but I'm just like... He went... He went to fucking Cartman again! Like... <laughs> okay, composure. Wusa. Let's move on. I have no idea to this day if they actually thought I was a pedophile or they were twisting my words, although it made more sense for the latter because they accused me of random things on the spot like molesting my younger brothers. Alongside this, two girls in the chat also backed up the owner by saying they were sexually abused and flat out asking me whether I thought they deserved their abuse, which really caught me off guard because I wasn't advocating pedophilia to begin with. I decided to leave the voice chat. Yes, that was probably a wise idea. And immediately after, I was DM'd vile remarks like, I hope you go to prison, pedo. Paraphrasing. And also various threats, including doxing and death threats. Citations needed old painful. Screenshots, maybe. There's plenty of screenshots of you being a horrible person, but there's very little of other people being horrible to you. Doxing and death threats, including from one of the girls who said she was abused. Yeah, again, I need to see proof of that, all painful. That's when I started seriously doubting her and the other girl's abuse. Because she proved herself a hypocrite by telling me to go kill myself. Well, they were under the perception that you advocated for raping fucking children! You fucking idiot! So when I said that I think Cartman, a racist, sexist, genocidal psychopath, should get a punishment like rape, people were acting like it was a crime against humanity, to which I was really confused. He tried framing someone for molesting butters, and once invited his mother to screw him in the middle of the Best Buy in front of loads of people. He literally invited his mother to screw him, so he wants it to happen. So how is it immoral by punishing him like that? Something I took great offence to because I actually tried to kill myself in the past by drowning, but that's a different story. Well, if that's true, that sucks. But, whatevs. It's difficult to have any form of sympathy or empathy for a man who told a good friend of mine that she deserved to be fucking raped. After an hour of trying to ignore it all, I gave in to my anger and outright told the girl that she deserved her abuse and to fuck off. Well, at least he's owning up to it. Which just gave them further fuel against me. Yeah, because you said a really fucking horrible thing. My reasons in the moment came down to being mass harassed by over a dozen people, as well as being sent doxing and death threats, and also being told to kill myself. I just snapped. You know what? I get that every day on fucking YouTube, mate. And you know what I do? I just fucking block and delete. They're decent buttons. I suggest you use them. Eventually, someone in the voice chat who didn't speak much offered to come on to his podcast on YouTube to calm down. Ah, yeah, that'll be Cadenza. I accepted because I thought he was actually listening to me. He was, but it was just a fucking ruse. No, it wasn't. Because after I joined the podcast, half an hour in, he invited the Discord owner and they made a mockery out of me. You made a mockery out of yourself, old painful. You turned yourself into a circus clown. More threats. What threats? <laughs> there were no threats against you at any point in that podcast. And at this point, I had a fucking panic attack. They were so smug about accusing me of pedophilia and further gave more threats citations needed all painful as well as laughing in my face when they streamed someone making a music video out of me addressing the stupid accusations on youtube 
I had a channel. Yes, he's talking about his YouTube channel. Okay. Your grammar's weird, man. Sort your paragraph structures out. Since I didn't know what to do, I couldn't think rationally and smashed my phone until I could no longer hear them. Then I went offline. They had streamed the whole thing, and it got over a thousand views with the guy getting over a hundred subscribers by humiliating me. No. It didn't get over a thousand views. It got over a hundred views. And Cadenza maybe got about 30 subs off of it. You're exaggerating. You're lying all painful. You're... This makes it difficult to sort of work out the truth. Whilst, unfortunately, the podcast itself is no longer on YouTube in its original form, those numbers can't be checked. But as for the actual content of the podcast, well, you know, I've got it in my drive. (laughs) I'm pretty sure that someone must have re-uploaded it somewhere. If they have, I'll link it to your thread here on Reddit so that the people who read it can know the truth. I could barely sleep that night, and I had a nightmare about it. I'm unsure whether or not I developed PTSD since, which would make the situation ironic, because the entire case against me was that I insulted someone suffering from trauma. It's the internet. You you said a stupid thing on the internet. Just get over it. I I don't think that's the basis of PTSD at all. I mean, in all honesty, if you had PTSD, you would be at therapy sessions, you'd be seeing doctors, you'd be seeing psychiatrists, you'd be on medications. You'd probably have just come back from a war zone and had your leg shot off. When I look at this, when I think about Old Painful, I don't see post-traumatic stress disorder. I see a keyboard warrior with an ego that is larger than Saturn. I was further threatened and pedo-shamed on Twitter when I tried making my case in defense of myself. No one listened. They also proceeded to dig up things I said in the past and grasped at straws to make me out to be a zoophile as well as a pedophile. The thing is that instead of just laying low, being quiet, not saying anything, just shutting the fuck up and, you know, not letting it bother you and not providing any more fuel for the fire. You pr- provided more fuel for the fire. You you brought this on yourself. That's the thing, you know, it's like... It's like people say, I have the right to free speech. I'm going to keep saying crazy, mad, bonkers shit. When in fact, they should be invoking their right to remain silent, chilling, relaxing, and sipping jippers on a beach somewhere. And relaxing and enjoying the sun. That's exactly what he should be doing. But no, no, he chose the path of fucking idiocy, ladies and gentlemen. He was an idiot. They started spreading lies about how I expressed a sexual fantasy with my family dog, which was a lie. Fair enough. And tried claiming that I posted animal porn, which was really me posting two pictures of my dog. One of him flipped over where, yeah, his dick was visible, but so was everything else. The second being my dog licking his dick to clean it and I made a joke about him being a horny little bastard and masturbating. It was a joke about my dog's stupidity. That's lack of filtering. Think about what you fucking say. They also tried saying that I admitted that I let my dog lick my crotch when I was naked, which is a bullshit lie. What I actually said is that I was playing on my Xbox and my dog licked my crotch area. I looked down, saw what he was doing and pushed him off. One of the moron's excuses was that it wouldn't get past court and I'd be in jail for negligence, which I know is bullshit because I've seen a video about weird dog behaviours listing sniffing and licking the crotch as a normal animal thing to do. Normal dog thing to do. As well as seeing a Reddit post about how a guy told a funny story 
about having sex with his girlfriend and his dog licked his ass because he forgot to close the door to the bedroom. This is your filtering again. Like, why are you writing this? What are you trying to gain? Like, th there's no way that writing sentences like this can work out well for you. There's no way that saying things like this in a Discord can work out well for you. These pricks made over a dozen videos about me. A dozen? I've only seen about five. You want to link the other ones? Citation needed again? Whether it be to mock me, or this one video that tried to pass itself off as a documentary and the dude who made it flat out admitted that he wasn't actually 100% sure whether or not I was a pedophile and said it was possible I was affiliated with said people. Again, citation needed link the video so we could see it. That enraged me. Because I'm all painful and I'm fucking mental all the time! Because I understand accusing one of paedophilia is a very serious thing to do, and if you're not 100% sure, don't do it. The same idiot also made the excuse that people get called pedos online all the time, get over it. Yeah, don't... That doesn't sound like something I would say, doesn't sound like something the Wanderer would say, so I don't know what this video is. Shortly after I was humiliated, they told me if I apologised to the rape victim, they would let me off the hook, which, reflecting on it, there's no way they would actually let me off that easily if they truly thought I was a paedophile. So I went on the guy's podcast again, started explaining my side of the story, and in violation of the agreement we had, the owner on the Discord came on and called me a liar for saying that I tried to change the subject in the initial voice chat, which was absolutely true, but I had to deal with it if I wanted them to leave me alone. The thing is, at the end of the second podcast, everything seemed fine, and Old Painful seemed to understand that he needs to stop being a dick on the internet. And then six months later, he started being a dick again. And now, a year after that, here he is, being a dick again. <laughs> Despite that, they still kept spreading rumours about me, with the rape victim very smug about videos about me. As well as this, when I reached 100 subs on my old channel, she commented, Hard to believe a rape apologist can get subs, as she, along with many others, wouldn't leave me alone. So I proceeded to take back everything I said, and the harassment went on again. So I deleted my channel and started a new one, which leads me to today. Ah, uh, he's not mentioning, like, his stupid wee text videos where he's, like, just being a horrible, disgusting little troll. This is an interesting yarn that he's trying to weave, ladies and gentlemen, full of missing points and little lies to make himself look like the victim. I am very shaken by the whole thing. Fair enough, I guess he would be. I wonder whether I've done something wrong. Yeah, telling a rape survivor she deserved it is definitely something wrong, my dude. I was ill-equipped to deal with trolls at the time, and I got angry easy. Yeah. I still have nightmares and I commonly pace around thinking about it, and I still remember it in vivid detail. Every online friend and those close to me understand I have a habit of saying out of place things and that I wasn't a paedophile. Well that's the thing. These people are your friends. These are people that you know. You went into someone's random Discord and start coming out with random shit. It's going to backfire on you, especially when you're saying, like, weird, off-colour shit that like you were. Randomly showing up in Discords and saying that Cartman deserves to be raped. Rapists deserve to be raped. Like, what did you think was going to happen? I did say horrible things to them in retaliation, but it was a horrible situation, and they were horrible people. And I feel zero pity over insulting the rape victim, like that given what she had said to me beforehand. She was just an entitled bitch that thought that her sob story gave her more to say than me. At this point, I don't think it's relevant whether she 
was really abused, given how it all started with my idea to rape rapists, and she wasn't listening. I mean, in all honesty, this paragraph is another paragraph that doesn't do you any fucking favours. Like, why? Why do you keep going off on this fucking tirade? I mean, in no way, shape or form is... I told a rape victim that she deserved it because I don't like her on the internet. That's not... That's not cool, my dude. I have spoken to people who have been abused after the long incident and they understand my perspective. I was being threatened and these people were hypocrites. These people never actually listened or tried to understand my perspective. As they continue to spread lies like how I made an excuse that I had autism as my reasoning for insulting a rape victim, which is a blatant lie and based on everyone not paying attention or twisting my words. I, I, I just, I, I have autism. I probably misspoke many times, but under constant stress at the time, as well as people trying to goad me into saying certain things, I couldn't help it. You think that you'd never tell an alleged rape victim that they deserved their abuse, which is the same for me, but if said person accused you of paedophilia by grasping at straws, as well as threatening you and encouraging suicide, you'd probably snap. I think, again, this goes more to his, like, stop, think, before either speaking or exercising your right to remain silent. Block, ignore, avoid, Get off the fucking internet and go and do something else for a minute until you're not fucking bothered by it anymore. Again, it wasn't as simple as just ignoring it. They started making videos immediately after and my most recent video was prone to mass dislikes, threats and mockery as soon as I expressed the idea to anal rape Cartman. And since I took the pedophilic accusations very seriously, as anyone would, I tried putting it down, but when that didn't work, I had a panic attack, as mentioned before. I tried to get the videos flagged, but of course it didn't work. If you have any additional questions, leave a comment and I'll talk to you about it. Nah, I don't really have any questions for him. He's just... spouting the same shite? Like, if anything, my questions would be like, what do you hope to gain from this? Why can you not just move on? Why are you, once again, basically signposting the way towards yourself? Why are you making such a big internet footprint that you've now got everyone's attention again because of shit that happened almost two years ago? Like I say, the guy needs to just chill, move on. The world isn't out to get him, he's just been a twat. Again. So, he thinks he has PTSD, ladies and gentlemen. Has he went to see a doctor? Has he went to see a psychiatrist? He went to Reddit. I think I have PTSD. Support. I commonly go on mental health subreddits because I'm trying to rationalise my problems. You should be going to a fucking doctor. I looked up the symptoms of PTSD a year after I was traumatised and saw that I had most of the symptoms, although I'm still unsure if I had PTSD. If you had PTSD, you'd fucking know about it and you'd have fucking went to a fucking doctor or a psychiatrist. I've talked about this on the cyberbullying subreddit, so for full context, here's a link to what happened. We just read that, ladies and gentlemen. What I want to talk about here is what happened since then. I tend to pace around the house when I get consumed by the thoughts of what happened. I do that all the time. I often talk to myself. I do that all the time. Look at me here in my room, talking to myself. Coming up for retorts for what these people said about me. Yeah, I come up with retorts for things that people said about me as well. And repeat them over and over again. I do that. I often struggle to concentrate at school. I struggle to concentrate at work. I often think about whether or not I did anything wrong since the trolls shamed me and did everything to make me feel guilty for lashing out at them. That... That paragraph in general, I know that, like, you know, me saying something, it, it feels like I'm trying to invalidate his story, but 
I would say, you know, ladies and gentlemen, have a think inside your own heads. Think about what he's written. Like, do you do these things? Because I think it's just part of being human. That's what we do. That's how human brains work. That's just primal, isn't it? If I'm totally wrong, feel free to, like, mention in the comments and, you know, I'll I'll have a think about it. But I, I don't think that what he's saying is unique to any form of post-traumatic stress disorder. I remember what happened in vivid detail. And I'm not any closer to forgetting. I sometimes take my anger out on my parents when I feel stressed. There is nothing I can do to get over it, no matter how hard I try. The memory of what happened is with me forever. I also feel I potentially got PTSD for the stupidest reason, because I was trolled online in the nastiest way, and cyberbullying classes didn't prepare me for the full extent of what assholes would say about and to you online. Again, I think that's just how human memory works. I mean, I still think about things that happened years ago. I think of anything after time it becomes easier to deal with things, but at the end of the day, it's a matter of just not letting your past consume your present or your future. You move on, you get on with it. It's a matter of moving from a fixed mindset, a sort of non-productive mindset, to moving into a more a more open, a more constructive mindset where, you know, instead of just sitting and letting your thoughts and your mind consume you, you go out and do things, you get a job, you attend college and get certificates, you know, something that's quite easy right now with a worldwide pandemic, you can study from home. I sometimes feel insignificant with my problem because I wasn't raped or shell-shocked in a battlefield. Instead, I was trolled online and I took the bait and freaked out. I often get paranoid that people won't listen to me and cast blame on me and labeling me disgusting things like pedophile, rape apologist and dog fucker. You just labeled yourself that. And the thing is, if you're labeling yourself that, people are going to... It's going to plant a seed in people's heads that make them want to look into it and they might find things. It was a very unexpected and confronting experience to be the person that seemingly everyone else treats as a child predator. I always feel tempted to re-engage with them and lash out at them once again. And self-controlling myself has been hard. I often try to make videos on YouTube in an effort to reach a thousand subs as they also mocked my limited success on YouTube. I always stress out that they'll find my new channel someday and I won't know what to do. Please help me. And, as we mentioned, it's not going to get much help off Reddit, ladies and gentlemen. Reddit, the cesspit of the fucking internet universe. He needs to go and get medical help. Psychology, psychiatry, doctors... It really is that simple, but instead he's once again went off on his mad, crazy rants on the internet, <laughs> dragging up all of his <laughs> dirty laundry from the past. And as well as that, he's linked at least three YouTube channels that he is involved in, in, like, his Reddit profile. So, you know, anyone finding these Reddit posts now knows where his new channel is. A channel which, I might add, he seems to be doing quite well with. His content seems generally okay. It's not like full of crazy shit like he was releasing before. But the fact is, he's come back to post these things, and he's essentially led everyone to his front door. He's bringing it upon himself. If he sat down, if he was quiet, if he went to a doctor instead of going to Dr. Reddit, we wouldn't be here today, ladies and gentlemen. We wouldn't be, once again, talking about a ghost of Christmas past, but... Huh. <sighs> Dunno. Like, all painful. Get help, man. Go. Go see a doctor. See a psychiatrist. Just get help. 
As I said before, I don't want you to get off the internet, I just want you to get help and stop being a dick. Stop trying to take down people's videos. People's free speech fair use videos. David, I want to take down a video that is making fun of me. Mario, you can't go around censoring people who are commenting on or criticizing your video. Copyright law leaves room for commentary, criticism, parody, and other transformative uses. You can get in a lot of trouble for ignoring that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I suggest that you give the previous videos by Old Painful a watch to get the full background on this. They are linked in the end screen, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.